Hello, Broadway fans. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am here with the very talented Samantha Williams from the recent revival of Carolina Change. And, you know, before we actually dive into the actual the actual performance of this piece, uh, it feels like 2020 had to be such a whiplash year for you, that experience, because you scored this major Broadway role. Uh, it's a great part. And then the pandemic kind of takes it away from you I think the day before you're supposed to start performances, what just walk us through, like, what is that time period like for you? Yeah, right. So basically, I think it was March 13th when everything kind of exploded. Um, we were about to have our first invited dress. We were about to have our first ever audience and we were going to get to share what we made. And obviously that did not happen. Um, and we didn't really know, like, what really was going on, like the degree of which COVID was going to impact all of our lives and for how long it was going to be. So to be honest, I saw it as like a two week break to rest my voice, chill out, maybe go home and visit my parents, come back, you know, like mm -hmm. a little bit I of- I think a we all did. <laughs> yes, exactly. So there was no disappointment. I was like, okay, cool. Like this is a blessing, you know, everything happens for a reason, whatever. And then, you know, obviously, uh, we click quickly learned that um, it would be about two years, or I guess a year and a half till we got to come back. Um, but during that time, you know, I feel like our show became more relevant than ever with everything that happened with George Floyd, with um, just every all the like, uh, racist things happening mm -hmm. to black people in America that have been happening forever, all of them coming and like resurfacing because we all had this time to be at home and social media made a big impact on all of that as well. So I feel like although the wait was horrendous and you know, all that stuff happened, I feel like our show ended up being more prevalent and, and mm -hmm. um, necessary than ever so it was kind of like a like ah, i hate that this is happening but also like we get to tell the story when it comes back so yeah um, yeah it's really interesting too when um when i think about your character emmy because she really has this uh, awakening uh mm -hmm. during the musical and it kind of to my eyes feels parallel a bit to the conversations around race that our country started engaging in. Yeah. So did that, how did that maybe change or affect the way you thought about her journey or played it when you came back? Yeah, honestly, like during the pandemic, I was living at home. I was with my mom. I'm from Texas. So like I was in the South, I was in the thick of it. Um, I went and I visited Lake Charles where the show is like takes place and it just like, I feel like oftentimes, you know, like we go into these roles that are like set in a certain time and we think we have to put something on. But I feel like over the pandemic, I realized like there's nothing to put on, like whether it's the, whether it's six, 1963, 1964 or 2020, like this still matters. And her story is also my story. And like, I realized how much I related to being the outspoken kid in my family from being home so long. And um, I also think oftentimes, you know, I went to school in New York, um, I went to college here and like, I've been here for like six years. We get like stuck in this bubble of, I call it like the liberal bubble. And so like I'm around people that think like me, I'm around people that look like me. And then um, over the pandemic, when I went home, I realized like, oh, like, oh darn, like there's a Trump sign. My neighbor is a Trump supporter. Like what? Like I didn't realize like it was like, you know, that close to me and having to live through that really impacted how I, I you know, approached Emmy this time around. So yeah, it was actually really helpful and awakening just for my own journey as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting you, mentioned talking about things being of a specific time period because I when I saw the show I overheard 
um, an audience member near me because it starts with that Confederate uh, statue, which is eventually torn down. And she was like, oh, they must have added this for the revival because there have been so many of those recently that have been yeah. taken down. And um, But it's not. It's a piece from that was there since the original. Yeah. Were you surprised at how well this piece from, I, I think he originally sort of sat down to write it in like 2003, how well yeah. it, it lined up with today? Yeah, I mean, like... Tony Kushner is like, the way he writes, it's like prolific. Like we have Angels in America, we have Caroline. Like it always like, that's like, but that's how you know it's good writing because it stands the test of time. Um, we always say, we always would say like, it unfortunately is still relevant, you know, cause I don't want to, I don't want to be dealing with this, you know, um, but yeah. And speaking of the statue, when I went and visited like Charles um, over the summer, uh, I got to like see the actual monument where that is because they still have it even though they I think the the town actually voted not to take the statue down but when they had their uh, most recent hurricane or whatever that always happens in Louisiana the statue came down and they just never put it back up or something like that wow. so um, it was really like just crazy to see it in real life and then I got to like start the show and like they like recreated it perfectly and I was just like oh my god like this is crazy <laughs> it's just crazy yeah. it really is crazy but and yeah when you are restarting the show uh, I'm so curious what is it like after so long being outside of the rehearsal room it to me would seem so daunting to come yeah so strange to come back what was that first day like when you have to come back to the rehearsal room was everything still living in your body? Did it feel like starting from day one again? Yeah, I mean like, yeah. There was honestly, to be honest with you, there was like this sense of calm because I think that it was just happening exactly when and why it was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? So like, and it was like an, like everybody, it was a universal experience. Like everyone in the cast was like, why don't I feel weird and nervous and like, Ah, like I like everyone just felt like ah like this is where we're supposed to be this is what we're supposed to be doing right now um and also you know we had a year and a half to work on the material by ourselves and dig in deeper so like it didn't yeah it just it was already living in our bodies so all we had to do is we got the privilege to do it with each other and for people but it was always already there yeah yeah. and one of those people you got to do it with is uh Sharon T. Clark who is such a force of nature uh, yes. in this role. What is it like to share a stage with someone who has that amount of, of presence and command? Yeah, I mean, I learned so much. <laughs> she was obviously my mom on stage, but also off stage. Like, she just took care of me. So like, it was just the best experience working with her. And I learned so much from her because she's such a grounded performer. And Oh my God, it was just, it was life changing. Like it changed the way I look at theater and the way I look at acting and just honestly existing. She's also so humble and like chill. Like you would, she's nothing like Carol. I mean, like she is obviously, but like she's not mean or anything like that. She's like the nicest human being. And also working with like Casey Levy and Chip Zine and John mm -hmm. Cariani, like all these incredible actors, they just, held me up and they like really really were so great to me so it was truly the best experience working with all of them yeah and i i think i read that you uh had some previous experience with the show because you did mm. it in college as yeah. caroline <laughs> yes what is how did that sort of affect Ooh. did you feel like you had a leg up or really like knew the material well <laughs> yeah when i so my freshman year of college at pace university Janine Tesori, we would have artists in residence where our college would bring um, someone from the New York world and have them work with us. And so Janine Tesori came in and of course she wanted to do like something wild and decided to do a workshop version of Carolina Change, kind of just like we had to provide all our own stuff, but we would basically work on it and then do the show with binders and like incorporate them. And basically we ended up doing the whole show. Um, but I auditioned and was cast as Caroline as a 17-year-old, which was 
<laughs> a sight to see. It was a really good time though. Um, and that's kind of how I got to know Janine. And uh, she kind of became a mentor for me throughout college. And then 2020, I mean, it was basically my senior year. I was in Evan Hansen and um, I went and auditioned and it was kind of just like a full circle moment for me to be able to do this and have it be like my big like launching off um, career thingy. So it was really, it's crazy how the universe works to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's a great story. Um, yeah. And so I, I assume, you know, you obviously were aware of the musical, so you were aware that Anika Nani Rose won a Tony for this in the original production. It sure did. Is, you know, does that make it, like, when you have the knowledge of something like that, does it make it hard to sort of separate it for yourself, the way she would sing it or perform it from what you have to do? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, maybe pre-pandemic, I would have been more worried, but because I had a year and a half, like, I don't know, I feel like this year and a half for me was so transformative and it was for a lot of people and a lot of things kind of got into perspective. So like, it was, you know, like it was revived and I was the one who was chosen. So I was, I have to do it my way. Um, and that was kind of the end of it. And I'm, I was so grateful to actually have an interview with her and it was kind of like a passing of the torch kind of interview. And like, we talked a lot about everything and, just with everything going on and who I am as a person, like, I could only do it as me. So, like, no matter, like, all the amazing things she did, like, I really could only do it as me, even if I tried to do something like she did. So, yeah, I mean, she's a Nikononi Rose. <laughs> like, it was super, like, crazy. But, um, no, I, yeah, I just tried to do it as me, so. Yeah. Well, I'd love to dive into one moment and see how uh, your thoughts on how you did it as you, um, because you have a great solo with uh, I Hate the Bus. And yeah. it's so complex to me, and I've seen it performed a lot of different ways because it invites different types of nuances. What what does that song mean for you? Um, yeah, I feel like it's just the moment in the play where Emmy makes the decision that she has to move forward and if even if her mom can't come with her she has to do it for her mom and for her siblings and for everyone else who will come after her um and for me personally i mean not to go back but it was really easy to like draw on the experiences of being stuck at home during the pandemic and wanting more and not really knowing how to get it but knowing that it's there and it's waiting for me and it's I have to make the decision to go and get it um, and it's up to me and I have that power um, and so that's kind of what I drew on while singing it eight times a week but um yeah I love that song it's really great yeah it was wonderful um, and I guess I'd like to know because this pandemic period seems like such a reflective one that uh, we, we keep talking about the shutdown. What um, What is kind of the most important thing do you learn about yourself uh, that you could bring to your performances during that time? Yeah. Um, I think I learned that, God, I mean, I learned a lot, but <laughs> I feel like we all did, or I discovered a lot. Um, I think I learned how much family meant to me, which really helped um, dive into the world of like being a teenager and having to live under my mom's rules because I was at home living under my mom's rules. Um, I also learned uh, how awesome it is. I feel like there's this trend and this theme of ancestry throughout uh, Carolina Change. And I just think I realize like how awesome it is that I'm doing what I'm doing and like that I really am my ancestors' wildest dreams, me as myself, and so is Emmy. And I think that like realization hitting and realizing like I have all the power coming from them, coming from the underground, coming from the roots, um, it just like f makes you feel like you're like capable of anything that you put your mind to because you have all these people on your back and on your shoulders, you know? Um, so I think that was actually probably the biggest thing, just like knowing that 
whatever I do, like I'm not doing it alone because I have all these people that came before me that are guiding me constantly and are guiding Emmy constantly. Um, yeah, that's kind that's of That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, before I let you go, I, you know, want to hear about because this was a great, you know, kind of first major role to have uh, because it's just an incredible part to, to showcase your singing and everything. Um, but now that that's over, what uh, what is on your Broadway bucket list? Are there other sort of musical roles that or any role that you're you're hungry for? Yeah, I mean, oh, gosh, that's a good question. Like shows that are already out that I would love to do. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, any part that you're just dying yeah. to play. Yeah, I mean, I love like Hades Town. I, I would love to be Eurydice. Um, I don't know, um, but I'm doing a show in Chicago called Life After at the Goodman Theater this summer as like an out of town. Um, and if it's, I guess if it's received well, it'll come to Broadway maybe. But yeah, it's about a girl who loses her dad in an accident and just like, it follows her through the stages of grief. And uh, the music is beautiful. And that's what I'm super excited to get started on. So yeah. That's great. Well, um, thank you so much, Samantha. I hope you have you. great uh, luck in Chicago. I hope to see it here someday yeah. soon. And if everyone's watching out there, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep up to date with us throughout this season. And Samantha, thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.